Hey, hello and welcome back to the Strawberry No channel. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for supporting my channel. Uh, things have been lately popping off. I'm getting, you know, a little bit more views, a little bit more activity in the comment section and in general things are happening. So I'm going to continue uh, doing the thing I've been doing, which is uh, reacting to Seth's videos. But uh, don't worry, more diverse content is coming in the coming weeks. I promise you I have I have plans that I cannot share with you or the haters will sabotage me. I have plans that I cannot share with you right now. And yeah, today I am reacting to Heroes of Might and Magic 2 review by Seth Sintach. I was actually going to react to, to another uh, video about heroes, not heroes, might and magic. But I looked at it and I thought to myself, it would be fun to react to them in order of release, as in the order that the games were released. I just thought it would be fun to go about it this way. And one thing that I noticed immediately, I think this is the oldest game that Seth has reviewed reviewed on his entire channel because Might and Magic 2 is from 96 uh, and I don't think he reviewed anything older than that. Honestly not sure but I obviously know Might and Magic uh, 3 because I'm Polish. Uh, every single person in my school has tried to convince me to play it with them. I played it a little bit. I don't like it. I uh, think I went into more details in his reviews of Songs of Conquest that I actually played because of Seth's review. Then I know 4 and 5 because of my girlfriend. She's a big fan of 4 and 5 because they're, she hates old games. That's why she doesn't like uh, Heroes 3. But she got into 4 and 5 and had me like uh, reinstall them for her and whatever. I And I just kind of don't dig that system. But... I might get them, give them a spin, like now that I'm a man-child instead of just a child, maybe my patient will not run out as quickly. And I do did enjoy my time with some Songs of Conquest, so I should go back and try it at some point. Maybe even do a stream or like a, do a little video on it. But yeah, Heroes 2, Heroes of Might and Magic 2, none of my friends ever talked about it. Uh, I don't know a single person that played this game because it's just that old and obviously not as popular as uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. So I'm really curious as to how the game even looks. I imagine it plays a little bit like uh, a little bit like 3. Let's see what Seth has to say about it. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Today, I'll be playing the predecessor to one of the best turn-based strategy games of all time. A game where combat is decided by whoever gets to move first, victory is decided by who gets the most <coughs> broken spells, and where the best day of a week is Monday. I'm speaking, of course, about Heroes of Might and Magic 2, but really... Okay, I, I, I need to point this out right away. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 uses 3D models. I must be honest, some creatures that I see right here, some look better as 3D models. Most of them, I think, look uh, better as these pixelated uh, things. And I love how Songs of Conquest, which came out really recently, went back to this type of graphics and does uh, those pixelated 2D sprites instead of like 3D models. That's so funny that we went back to that. I did not realize that the series switched uh, graphics up so dr drastically be between uh, 2 and 3. It should just be called really Heroes of Magic and sometimes might if you're very unlucky. I played this first as a child and now I return to it as a man-child. Released <coughs> in 1996 by New World Computing, we're going to be looking at this game as the original building blocks for Heroes 3, which got everything right. In contrast, Heroes 2 gets everything wrong, but it's got <laughs> a lot of soul, it's very pretty, and it's generally a very 
relaxing experience. First, yeah, let's honestly, cover the lore. Looks... The story takes place after the dominant monarchy has a little disagreement. Honestly, it Roland looks Iron good. Fist is the rightful Except successor the to the throne, the but Archibald Iron Fist has had enough of his faggot brother, so he <laughs> accuses him of soiling the bed and forces him to flee the kingdom in embarrassment. In the campaign, you can choose to either stand with Roland Iron Fist and defend his right to shit the bed, or choose to represent Archibald in his rightful condemnation of his brother's scatological tendencies. Canonically, Roland wins and turns his brother to stone, which is used as a plot point in the RPG games since Archibald is the only person who understands nuclear physics. I'm not joking, I'm completely <laughs> serious. You need to free him in Might and Magic 6 unless you want the planet to explode in a thermonuclear blast. The Archibald campaign is pretty challenging. The Roland campaign is a billion times worse. There's only one way to win. It's a okay. complex strategy that I like to call restart. I thought it's going to be like a easy and hard campaign, which is a concept that be, that's been a around for ages. Like I remember the first Resident Evil had you choose either the Jill scenario, which was easy mode, and a Chris scenario, which was significantly fucking harder. Starting the mission until you get lucky. Uh, but I guess in this case it's just hard and harder, which is spell that lets you no funny. clip across the map. I think that statement alone should give you a hint of what Heroes 2 is all about. I got the good I old mean, games copy, do that which emulates free, the game to run on Windows 10. There's some glitches, but these can all be fixed by playing around with the configuration. Generally, everything looks, plays, and sounds great. This was the first Might and Magic game where they went all out with their sound design. Everything is beautiful composed, and I should mention, every single town theme is sung by a fucking professional opera singer. Have a listen. Yo! Bro, that's some fucking FromSoft music. Uh, like Dark Souls and Bloodborne have so many, like, very orchestral songs that feature uh, visually singing. It honestly sounds like something that would play during a, a boss. Okay, that's just a that's just a fucking Dark Souls uh, boss music. What the fuck? In this game, are absolutely top notch. Where did they get the money for all of this? What the hell? Is. Every single unit, every single set piece, even the resources you pick up, gemstones, crystal. Was Might and Magic franchise this fucking successful before Heroes of Might and Magic 3? I thought like uh, Heroes 3 was their breakaway success into the, the mainstream, but I could be wrong. I don't really know much about uh, the regular Might and Magic franchise. Treasure chests, they're all still crispy clean to this very day. To illustrate my point, here's a basic unit dwelling for the Knight Faction. It's a structure responsible for spawning the most useless unit in the game, the Peasant, and it still looks better than any place I've ever lived in. This <laughs> detached two-bedroom cottage probably costs more than the student loans of several millennials combined. They True. told me medieval peasants had it bad. I'm sorry, how can they have it bad when they've clearly got a front garden and, supposedly, a clean source of drinking water? There's a very saturated, high contrast color palette in this game, and as a kid, I took all that quality for granted, because the modern Heroes games now look like someone's <coughs> shitty DeviantArt page. I'm going on <coughs> tangents now, which is a growing we, symptom we of my impending those. dementia. So let's get to the gameplay. Heroes 2 is a turn-based strategy game, which means it's for thinking people and people who are too slow to play StarCraft instead. The principle is very That's fucking true, man. Jesus fucking Christ. There is nothing more humbling in this life, nothing more humbling on this planet than booting up a StarCraft 2 ranked with your homie and seeing somebody with a collection of Korean le letters that has the worst fucking ping you have ever seen in your entire life just sweep you, completely outplay you, 
in a, a gold ranked game because he he is probably playing uh, his smooth you know after grinding his rank in korea he decided to boot up his Europe account play some to Korean players what is considered a casual game by destroying Europeans who are tryharding against them. Holy god damn. People who are really good at StarCraft are built different. Very simple. You recruit heroes to lead your armies. These all have different stats and skills respective to their faction. The portraits for heroes are an absolute <coughs> acid trip. There's almost no way to tell what class they are until you mouse over them. Let's take- Holy AI generated images, man. This God guy, for damn. example, can you guess what he is? Yeah, that's right. He's a knight, which means he's a good guy. And on Roland's side. Okay, let, let, let's let's try that again. Can you guess what this guy does? Yeah, correct. He's a wizard, which means he's also a good guy on Roland's side. You know, okay. I'm really starting to doubt. You know, say what you might about this, but at least they are not um, coding the characters according to how pretty they are which is something a lot of media do where the pretty guys are the you know the paragons of virtue and justice and the the, the guys who have scars who they look mean they are yeah they are, they are the bad guy they are so bad that they might have different colored eyes Roland's motives. Half of his team look like they've just come out from serving prison sentences for aggravated rape. But <coughs> who am I to question loyalty? A lot of the sorceresses make for great waifu material though. Ah, the 90s. Back before women became degenerate and started plastering their faces with septum piercings. Oh wait, oh no. You recruit army <laughs> by spending all your savings on dwellings okay, that set out new units brother. at the start of each week. You also have to pay them up front. Each of the six factions has its own Bro, I love the fucking... I love the unit sprites. Look at that dwarf. That looks so army, good. Which range in Holy... tears from what the fuck is that? Th that's a bear with a crossbow and it says orcs. What? That's not an orc, that's a fucking... Bro, that's a... That's literally a bear with a crossbow. That's not an orc. What Range the hell? From level 1 to level 6. However, your heroes can only hold 5 different stacks, so you'll have to pick and choose or mix and match to suit your strategy. Wizards are all about range. They've got 3 different shooters. Warlocks answer that by having 3 different flyers that can close the gap. Knights have no flyers, neither do the barbarians. Instead, the knights prefer to tank all the damage, while barbarians lack any kind of defense and rely on hitting fast and hitting hard. A sorceress is a mix of everything. A necromancer is a mix of everything undead. They get their <laughs> ultimate unit quicker and cheaper than anyone else. And power liches are the only unit in the game which can accidentally wipe out half of your own army. You've got a limited set of moves and actions you can take every turn. Once you're done with your turn, the computer moves around and pretends to be intelligent. Rinse and repeat. Research new spells, upgrade your dwellings, get higher level troops which aren't worth the money, and crush your enemies. It's it's all very simple. What's not simple is figuring out which factions aren't complete garbage. So, to save you the time, I've made a very easy chart. As you can see... Excuse me? <laughs> Of the six different towns you can choose, five of them are objectively hot garbage. That's because warlocks have the best unit in the game, dragons. Some might argue that different factions have their own strengths and shine at different points in the game. Knights and barbarians in the early game, necromancers and sorceresses in the mid game, and warlocks and wizards in the late game. We call these people a heroes to apologist. They are subversive, <laughs> they are insidious, and they are fully convinced that a tier 6 unit with one quarter of the health and none of the perks of a dragon is a good 
financial investment. Also, they can't do this. If such a person approaches you, don't what listen the to their fuck? lies. Unplug their hearing aid and jam their mobility scooter immediately before they manage to convince anyone else at the retirement home. In Heroes 2, magic is king. Magic is essential for victory and completely I mean, is that true in illiterate, uh, brain dead free warrior also? can hope to achieve. Why? Because there's no counterplay. All a mage has to do oh. is keep repeatedly suicide bombing his enemies to victory. What is the answer to someone rushing at you repeatedly with phoenixes and spamming Armageddon? Losing. That's what. To beat magic, you have to counter magic with more magic. Armageddon spam can't hold up to a wizard with more spell points than white matter in his brain who can just cross the entire length of the map with dimension door and take all of your towns in a single turn. Heroes 2 is a mess, but it's a beautiful, exploitable mess. In all due fairness, the idea of the game is that you're not meant to stick to a starting faction and instead ramp your way up to getting the town you want, which is warlocks. If you can't get warlocks, eh, settle for wizards. Titans can still hold up to dragons, and boars make for a good source of fresh pork, I guess. If you can't get wizards, settle for uninstalling the game. Also, it should be mentioned that while everything works great on my good old games copy, the sound clip used for teleportation has been completely scuffed. How? Why? I don't know, but I think we should all experience it together. I know oh, that's has that's risk, very bad. Oh my god, my fucking my ears. Eardrums. So, if you have to teleport, please remove your headphones beforehand, or you're definitely going to develop tinnitus. Since we're on the Jesus subject Christ, of bullshit that's, strategies, that's really we might bad. as well I did also not cover expect bullshit it to be units. So bad. Luckily, the developers had the foresight to realize that some of these might be a little too strong, so they're not available to any faction. Instead, they can only be obtained in limited numbers through diplomacy and bribery. Case example one, genies. These can only be found in magic lamps. They're very pretty. They also hit like a truck, but what my former child brain couldn't understand is that they've got a special ability. They can divide any stack in two, and it doesn't matter how many genies there are. One is enough. So, split them up into stacks and go <coughs> ham on your enemy's strongest unit. Hit a stack, get lucky, and your enemies just lost several weeks Jesus worth of income. Christ, and if you're playing that's... multiplayer, you've just lost several years worth of friendship. Case example <laughs> two, ghosts. Remember how I mentioned peasants were completely useless? That's not entirely true. If you can somehow convince a couple of ghosts to join you, stop whatever it is you're doing and locate a small horde of peasants. Don't kill them. Let them grow. Let them ferment and let their population explode over the next few weeks. Then, it's time to harvest your crop. You see, ghosts take the numbers of any stack they've killed and and since peasants have a single hit point, you can sit back and watch your number swell from several dozen to several hundred mm, to several thousand. That's very In interesting. Fight, you've turned a mediocre stack of units into the single most powerful unit in the entire game. At this point, nothing and no one can stop you. Your legion of ghosts will keep growing and growing until there's nothing left to consume. Their numbers will swell so high that the game just gives up trying to show you how many there are. When you've achieved and abused such high levels I love of old games design, that cannot can be balanced anymore. A true strategic master of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. The game is still absolutely worth playing. It is dirt cheap on good old games, and in this day and age, even a potato clock can run the game. If you want a fair and balanced strategy game, don't play it. If you want to ambush leprechauns for their lunch money, redistribute wealth to the masses, only to murder the masses later, and cheese your way to victory, then this is the game for you. I give it three out of four genies because I don't have the extra gemstone to hire the last one. Thoroughly <laughs> recommend it. Go play it. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of a Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. A huge thanks to one member of a guild in particular since he somehow managed to get me a signed copy of a Heroes Live Orchestra CD and a nice HP keyboard, which he optimized for me in case I ever decide to play a league again. Thank you, fam. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. And now, it's time to violate copyright. Enjoy. Oh no. Sorry. Had to mute it. Um, yeah, so... 
I just wanna say, man, for a 90s, 1996 game, this doesn't look bad. In some aspects, it's, it fucking looks better than Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which came out in 98, I believe. Like, goddamn, I have seen worse looking games that are um, more recent than this one. That's really, really cool, but yeah. Basically what I expected uh, from Heroes. The problem with this type of game that Heroes of Might and Magic uh, is... Because th I wanna say th there aren't games like this. There is Heroes of Might and Magic and there is Songs of Conquest. And there aren't really other games that are played this way. And I think there is a reason for that. This is a fucking nightmare to balance for uh, multiplayer. There are so many aspects to this game and it has such depth that it's impossible to balance. Case and point, Songs of Conquest. I watched Seth's uh, review on my channel. I recommend the video if you haven't seen it. Seth talked a lot about how he exploited a lot of things if song in Songs of Conquest and they were getting patched live as he was exploiting them week by week. This is not something that Heroes of Might and Magic 2 and 3 developers could do because they released a game and that was the finished intended product. And then they introduced expansion and then they could fix some of the problems that the base game had, but then the additional features of the expansion, they couldn't predict what people will do with them. So when Heroes of Might and Magic 2 launched, and there are problems like magic is completely scuffed and overpowered, the developers can't really do anything about it. So going back to experiences like uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3, trying to play them with your friends is a nightmare because immediately um, people will talk, oh, you cannot play Necropolis. Oh, uh, you cannot abuse this spell. Okay, we're playing only on this map, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because it's just not balanced. It's not, uh, it's not like uh, fucking, I don't know, civilization which is way more balanced and it still has like um, nations that are better. There is always going to be a quote-unquote tier list. There is always going to be the, the best unit, the best dwelling, the best uh, opti optimized way to play. But when you introduce things like Seth mentioned that have no counterplay like magic with uh, those phoenixes, that's fucked. And going back and playing this with your friends just might be impossible because of that. Uh, thank you very much for watching and continuing to support my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.